come to the year 6 assembly. The theme for our assembly is cultures and communities. I hope you enjoy our presentation. Culture, culture, the mother of our identity. War unto us. Culture is crying, bleeding, and it's not come to hand up to kick the back. In our class, we are looking at past communities, but as yes, institutions, we are focusing on culture extinction. Culture extinction has been brought in by Westernization. People are preferring Western culture to their own. So basically, they are deciding oh, they want to like Western culture more than their own culture. We should all be proud of our culture. We all have a unique language. Many know it as our local language, but I know it as our mother tongue. It, the language it's the language that we learn from our from our cultures. Every culture has one. But yet our generation is speaking having conversations in English. We have a we have lost a lot of words. My teacher told me that language is what makes us unique. But to me, I think it unifies us. Seeing and hearing other people speaking your mother tongue makes you feel comfortable and not alone. Everyone has a language, but some people are not even trying to learn one word in their language. More than 20% of the earth speaks English instead of their cultural language. Why is it that you know how to speak English fluently but not your cultural language? Long ago, everyone used to speak their cultural language. What about you? Keep in mind that language is a roadmap of culture. It tells people where they are coming from. Sweet, sweet Shanada. Such an elegant attire. It's such a um, grandfather's and grandma's day. It's such a shame they don't wear it. They have thrown you out like trash and like trash and naked in indespicable clothes. Shame, shame. Culture clothes are what define us. They have been around for so long that they have become cultures. Some cultures they are funny, but in the Indian culture we wear shoes which is called high shoes. We are not happy. If we compare the past with the present, you shall notice that the past thing wear the same clothes. The present may wear a balanced trousers or jeans. That I don't find a problem. We should learn to love and cherish our culture. People have been losing interest in learning their cultural dances. And this is mostly out of imitation. Most people try to imitate other people. Once someone learns something and tells them about it, they try to do it. I mean, trying new things is not bad but imitating things that you can't do easily. Over the time, the cultures have been changing. This generation doesn't want to know how to say what's about their culture. They don't even want to know their dances. They don't want to know their languages and they don't want to know their culture. Um, what if someone wants to become a chef? They don't even want to know their culture. They need to know it. What do they do? If you go to your grandparents' house and they ask you to know their culture, they don't want to know it. They will feel ashamed. So these are one of the many reasons I think it's really important to know. Food plays a huge role in culture. It is important because it operates as an expression of culture identity. People bring their cultural food to different countries because it is a way of spreading their culture when they move to new places. Cultural food is also important because it brings families together. Food creates a bond between different cultures. Eating cultural food reminds who we truly are and creates good memories and warmth and warmth and ties us to our family. Food, food, food. You are our life. Back then cultural food was the most important valuable food to eat. But these new future generations say they enjoy all these new junk foods such as chicken and chips. Our grandmas go to the kitchen and cook a lovely organic meal. But our future generations say they do not want to eat our lovely cultural food. You must test a cultural meal to understand.
understand it. Don't let it fade away. And fight for your country. There are very many people suffering from obesity. And this comes from a point of us choosing fast food of our country. This hasn't done us any good except of drawing us close to our lives. death. Let us embrace our culture food. Culture food better. Every culture has norms, which are practices and behaviors, but it's a pawning. We've dropped out norms. Behavior has changed majorly throughout the years. Back when our parents and grandparents were born, they used to respect everyone. Nowadays, we have children demanding respect from their parents instead of the reverse. What a generation. This major, this major change has affected education, criminology, communication, and much more. This has also affected our relationships with our parents. Wouldn't it be such a wonderful thing if we started to respect our parents? The continuous erosions of culture elements has not spared our traditions. This has come along with the changing beliefs and attitudes pretty close manifest towards the and it's outstanding effects. These have been two side effects and therefore let us save the much money we spend in hospitals by using numbers. Let's ask ourselves, what's causing all this? I think the young generation has had less time to learn about their cultures. How about parents giving in more time being better cultural role models? What do you think? Now you know what's really going on. Not only your culture, but my story. However, we can change and have our cultures restored. Your culture wear looks stunning on you. Your culture food tastes so delicious. And your culture language makes you sound so good. Cultures, you, cultures, you. Never let them play with one culture vanish, because culture is our identity. Namaste. Thank you. From 1000 BC to 400 BC, Ethiopia was called the Amet. Later on, the Amet split into many city-states. One of these city-states, called Aksum, had united the highlands. It had expanded later on into most of Ethiopia. Many years later, in the 1800s, it was the reign of Menelik II. Menelik had led the Ethiopians in a war against the Italians. Ma many years later, Haile Selassie had also led the Ethiopians through a war against the Italians again. In both wars, the Italians had to surrender. Fun fact, Ethiopia is the only country in Africa which had never been colonized. In the century, Uganda was surrounded by enemies. And the king with his army went to Unfortunately, in that war, the king was killed and the soldiers lost the battle. But the queen managed to encourage them and give them courage and also devised a, a mechanism of them sharpening grids and using them as weapons. This helped the army fight off the enemy. She did not only stop there, she went back to the capital and protected the throne for her unborn son, who later became Sekabaka Mulondo. And that's why Nanono Nagulia is my hero from Uganda. It was a neurotic speaking group that were believed to originate from Sudan and are now settled in the Lake Victoria Basin. Why did the Boers come, come to East Africa? When the Boers originated from the now region of the Sudan, they were all original pastoralists. But when Rendapest and this came and decimated their lands, they all became the shamans of the island. The so-called Ethiopia came in eastern Uganda and eastern Kenya. So this is the Asuke. It's a tradition where the artists of so here as an Africa. Here is Adono. People use it for functions. It's for drinking. So do's and don'ts. Rule number one, always respect your elders. Don'ts. Don't number one. House should not be wearing those short clothes. They should be wearing decent clothes. Women have to cover their full body while they're going outside. So they wear a burka to cover their full body. This is called a burka which women wear while they're going outside. 
Turban. Turban is the traditional wear for men. They, it is a long gown worn by men. This is called a turban which men wear. Foods. Our traditional food is a biryani. We make it on special occasions like Eid. This is a biryani. Do's and don'ts. Some of the do's and don'ts in our cultures are should, um, kids should be inside their home before 7. You should do pray 5 times a day. This is one of the art in our culture. Islamic art encompasses the visual art produced in the Islamic world. This is our traditional food. It is called biryani. You have made it out of uh, rice and chicken. You can make it out of fish, meat and vegetables. What I am wearing right now is our cultural wear. What I am for girls and for women it is a shalwar kurta. For men and for boys this is a kurta. In this culture, our dress code is called the Shanana, and that's what it looks like. Um, we usually wear it on special days like weddings and even when we're dancing the intro. The, this is what the intro looks like. On uh, the side, this is them. As you can see, they kind of look like the Shanana. Our step of food is called Kalo, which is also known as This is my traditional coat. Called iron. It's a food normally used in traditional ceremonies. Also, this is, but this time it has marriage ceremonies for the machine. This is what we use to grind ground granular paste. Now, this is my traditional snack. It's they call it pancake. It is one of the four constitutional monarchies born in the western region of Uganda. The king. They are king, mainly known as Chaba Singa. Basoga Greek by saying Wasizoti. That is to say the morning or according to time of the day. The staple food is sweet potatoes and brown nuts. When children are born, they are given one of the twelve days and are not given in summer. Okali, Akuli, Achali, Ayemi, Awoki. Arali, Aboli, Aboti, Akeni, and Akoti. My Empako is a game. Empako is a positive part of the game in social times. Did you know Empako can be instinctual or even? Uganda culture is headed by His Highness Ronald Mutini. And ruling by his side is the Nyabakerika Sylvia Maginda. Now, for the cultural way, this is a gomesi or a busuti, which is tied with this. For the males, they wear a kanzu, which is worn for special occasions, such as marriages, burials, and etc. The staple food of Buganda is matoke, and it can be eaten with jinat sauce, beans, fish, and meat. In Buganda culture, the younger people are encouraged to kneel down to greet their elders and teachers. So this is the Baganda's traditional wear, which is named the Gomez, which is our cultural wear. It's very respectable in our re region. And then it's a must for every lady to put it on an important place. It's used place. for praying. Thank After we finish showering, we come to the temple and we pray. The second artifact is a bell. We call it a Hindu artifact because when we're praying, we use it like this. It's a cultural song and then we use it while we're singing it. Then we have one more artifact and it's called a in. This is the ins. Like you get a matchbox, then you light it up with fire. See, I got fire and I lit it. See, then when you think it has got to the ins with fire, you wait. Then you do this. Then you take the smoke around the So that was my cultural dance. We usually do it in our occasions.
like mostly all creatures are like glory when you fly kites. Okay, this song is done after harvest or at or any other special occasions in duo culture. Oh, 